What's up YouTube, I'm just another guy and welcome back to the Welsh Way here with Aberwith Swift Town. So, here we are at the third qualifying phase of the Champions League and like I said we're in the second group, that's pot two, so we're going to be facing a Belarusian team. I guess that's what you call the team from Belarus. <laughs> and, which means we've got a long way to travel and we're away from home for the first leg, so it'll be interesting to see how things go. have a little bit of transfer news to talk about as well. Uh, we have one guy in, but we'll talk about the out first. Luke Edge was given on a free transfer to Plymouth with the clause in his deal that if uh, if he sold on, 25% of... Uh, what was it? 25% of the profit? You can check this out if you go on to clauses and goes on to um, Luke Edge. 20% of the next transfer fee will be owed. Okay, so it's not profit. So any money that is sold... If he's sold for, from Plymouth for any amount of money... We pick up 25% of that, so I'm all right with that. He he needs to be on his way out. I don't think he's good enough for the team anymore. I think the quality of player is beyond his. I mean, he's good for this level of World Premier League football, but that's not what we're looking for anymore. We're looking for people who are cut out for Champions League football, and this guy is not one of them. And elsewhere, we brought one guy in, and he's a striker, another striker. in rung in Nathan Green. He's a Welsh striker, so that's a good thing. 18 caps for the under-21 team, scoring 7 goals. He's got a very nice stats to be an advance forward or a poacher, which is very nice because that's what I like to play. Started his career off originally at Liverpool. Been on loan at Hartlepool, Gillingham, Doncaster, Northampton and Plymouth in his time. And never really scored many goals, but I feel more than capable of playing at this level, which will help him develop when he's scoring goals. But I feel better than what we've already got on this squad. And looking at the team now, we have Alessandro and Green. Then we have Wynn James, Craig Neal, who looks pretty decent. And we have youngster Will Evans, who will be getting games somewhere. I may need to try and loan that guy out, actually. Let's try and do that now. If we can... No, we can't set him out on loan. God damn it. We're, we're trying to get some games. But basically, there is no place anymore. Well, I feel there's going to be no place very soon for David Hislop. What I'll do is actually put him on the senior squad for now, because I'm not sure if I'll be playing Will Evans a lot this year, because he's only 16. Uh, I don't know, but I've, I'm struggling to find a place for David Hislop. 24, so he's one of the oldest strikers at the side. In fact, he's only a year younger than... Well, actually, no. They're, they're two older players now. But originally, he was only a year younger than David His or Ryan Davis, who was the oldest player at the squad. But I'm struggling to find a place for him. And... Yeah, it may be his time to move on. I'm, I can say, good player at this level, but is he Champions League material... I don't think so. And it, it's really harsh thing to say that because really good player for the side. But this is going to be the team today. We're going to continue forward. Uh, going to, we're going to the pre-match. I haven't done that. So 11,429 tickets are going to be here today. Very good pitch conditions. Sunny weather as well, which is good. No blistering cold weather in Eastern Europe. And let's go into our team selection anyway. So uh, Cor Cornell, David Cornell is going to be getting his... I don't know why I struggled with that. Cornell. Cornell, Cornell or Cornell? Cornell. It's Cornell. I don't know why I struggle with that name so bad. I'll get used to it. Don't worry. It's just new names. <laughs> but David Cornell is um, he's going to be making his debut today. 30 years of age for the side, being in goal. And as well as that, Nathan Green as well. And the bench looks like Terry Whitehouse, Alan McGuinness, Burrell Davis, Neil, and Win James. Win James being the new entry to the bench. Apart from that, it's the exact same starting 11 that won our last two legs as well. Actually, what we're going to do is Fraser on the bench... Uh, I may actually start, I think we'll start Fraser, just because he's a little bit more experienced, that may help in today's match. But let's go, also, quick little thing I want to point out, change the roles up front, we now play a false nine with Alessandra and advance forward with Green, before that was a target man, well in the previous match I say that was a target man and a uh, Trequatista, in the past it has been like this, but... Depending on who we have at the side, that often depends on certain positions. Like the centre mids, I always try and cater that to the centre mids. And the strikers, I try and cater that to who, you know, what their best playing roles are. So yeah, let's go straight into this. So, we've been given a chance of trying to cause an upset. I mean, whether we can actually do that, I, I, I don't know. That that would be something that will obviously tell over a time period. But for right now, I say we are on equal playing terms with these guys. And I reckon we have a chance today. If we play well. That is the big if. Let's continue forward. I uh, don't really care who we get to meet. Because the main worry right now is going through. Let's get the assistant to do this team talk. That is a nice team talk. 
Bale's looking up for it. That is a good sign as well. He has to be able to give him his number 11. I haven't had that message pop up about select player numbers. But let's go today. And straight away the highlight, BATE have the ball under their possession. They're attacking down the left. Come on, Fraser, do something. Uh, the ball's bubbled through. And Cornell's going to pick up the ball for the first time in a... Gr well, he's not a green shirt, but under the green shirt. We're getting the ball away, and this is not good. They're attacking down the left yet again. And the ball in the box. Good save from the keeper. Just about pushing it out. Almost pushed it in his own net. There was a little bit of a gap there. I'm going to have difficulty saying some of these guys' names. But here's Alessandro. Come on, Alessandro. Go, run. Run. Come on, counter-attack. Counter-attack. He's beaten a few players. He's got Rees there with the ball. Rees breaking through. Rees with the goal. Oh, what a goal to score. That is counter-attack. That is magnificent. Oh, that is, that is how you counter-attack. Ha! Oh. Alessandro did it brilliantly. Rees did the right thing as a right mid. The striker's running down the right. You go in the center and you fill in his position. But by God, them two just did amazingly there. And we have taken the lead. And here's Bale with the set piece. We've been into a dangerous area and Cohen Drake has given us a 2-0 advantage and two away goals. Wow! We are doing amazingly. We don't just see that one again because that is how you use a set piece. And this is way more than I expected at starting the game. Here is Simon James to Gunter. He's been brought down and challenged hard, but there's nothing given. And now they'll try and see if they can build an attack quickly. We had a lot of players back, and in the end, that attack is petered out. We had, a, we had our whole back four back, so I mean, they had to pass the ball, and the guy was too greedy. 22 minutes in, and another highlight. This game's been pretty action-packed so far. Karpotovic, I think that was that. Stefo... I can't... <laughs> Some of these names, just they're not on the screen too long. For me to comprehend how to say them. It's bland with a lovely challenge and trying to find Alexander up front. The can't it's good to see Alexander get a goal. I think it was his first goal. Actually, no, he didn't get a goal, did he? He got the assist though. His Rees down the right, going for his second maybe, and good cut, good tr tracking back by the other two's fullback. There's Bale with the corner. In a dangerous area. Still in the dangerous area. And Gunter's keeper's done a magnificent save. I don't know how. And Drake. Trying to do the follow-up shot. The keeper looked like he defied the laws of physics there for a second and <laughs> saved that shot. And we could be 3-0 up. We've asked three good opportunities there. If we include Reese's one and the follow-up from the corner. She could easily be 3-0 up. He's green on his debut today. He's been tackled and dispossessed a little bit too easily. Especially when he only had his man to beat and he'd been through on goal. They, could, they love attacking down the left, this team. They really like attacking down the left. But what a ball and... Wow, that is way too easy for them. For Donken, for Denko, I think that was Franco. Might be Franco. Scores and gives BATE a little bit of a lifeline in this game. That was way too simple though. A ball over the top as oh, hey. Huel with the goal. Tristan Huel. I think that's Huel again. This hasn't been uploaded before. This hasn't been, this has been recorded before anything else has been uploaded with me. But that guy, uh, with me pronouncing that guy's name. So I said that wrong and it bugs you. Apologies. But it gives us a 3-1 lead. <laughs> Just when I thought maybe they'll have a, maybe they'll fight back into this game. We get a third. And that's it. Half time. 3-1. I'll say this passionately to the lads. I'm very pleased with how you're going. Keep it up. People are looking delighted, especially Nathan Green. Hopefully that will just encourage him on that a little bit more. Still yet, we still yet to see either of our new signings up front score a goal. Okay, it's Champions League football, it's a little bit hard for them to just come in and score, but they need to. Because they'll be getting a lot of it, hopefully, this season. European football. This is Green. 1-1 with the keeper. Green scores on his debut. Lovely goal, Nathan Green. 49th minute. The Walsh man has popped up and scored. Simon James. Alexander Alexander. Linking up well with Green. And partnership already building there. And lovely goal across the keeper. Fantastic. 4-1. And it's only the away leg. It's only the first leg. And we're away, I should say. Here's Green playing the ball to Alessandro. Alessandro going through now. And, oh, Alessandro almost getting his first goal for the club. Is Bale whipping this one in? Uh, unlucky. Come on, Bland. Oh, Bland, what was that first touch? That's not good. And now they can create a counter-attack like, like we did for our first goal. No, no, they couldn't do it like our first goal. Our first goal was too good for them. And here's Green. Maybe we could actually bounce back on them. Uh, clearly, they might, clearly, they're throwing players forward. There's a lot of people out of position when they were trying to counter-attack. Now, in the end, neither of them grow to anything. <laughs> Again, it's end-to-end -end stuff right now, aren't they? They've given the ball away. 
That's every time we get the ball, it's, it's actually end to end stuff. You see, we get the ball, they run down their end, get the ball back, we run down their end. It's just constant back and forth. No one's taking their time with the possession. Quite an interesting game, really. I'm pretty sure if this is an extended highlight, you get a lot more highlights. Like I say, there's been a lot of shots in this match. The goal scorer has been tackled, and he's picked up the ball with Fedorenko, I think it was Fedorenko. He scored the goal, but come on, let's go, Alexandra. Play the ball to Green, he does play the ball to Green. Green going for his second, he gets his second. 5-1, Abba with Swift Town. Woo! Get on our level, B-A-T-E, this is incredible. I mean, just, just picture this, last time we were in this stage of the competition, we were facing Olympiacos, and we progressed through on penalties. After losing the first leg 1-0, we came back and won the second leg at home 1-0, and we went through on penalty shootouts. This see this time round, we're winning 5-1. <laughs> His bail with the set piece finds Gunter and Viv Gunter as his score sheet. I think it was offside actually. Yeah, he was. I was just to say, I think I saw the assistance flag come up on the side. This is around the time I'd like to be making a substitute, but there's no one I really want to substitute. Fraser's a little bit tired actually, but I feel a change to the defence is a little bit risky. Ah, oh, Gareth Bale's picked up another knock. That's his second in four in three games. We're gonna play Gavin. Davis, we're actually going to put Reza on the left just because he's more experienced. I don't think the change position will matter too much. And like I said, I don't really want to be making a change just because everyone's playing well. I feel if I bring someone on, we may find they're a bit complacent and therefore cause, you know, a mistake or something. But I doubt that's going to happen now. Only 30 seconds remaining. Green chasing down a nothing ball, as all good strikers should do, no matter what the time of the game is. <laughs> that's the keeper just punched that one out. And of course, that's just the ending highlight. And we're going to walk away with this game with a 5-1 victory. <laughs> it's well beyond anyone's expectations. What I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go forward now and um, look at the press conference because they were like, oh, some people have thought you could get a surprise result here today. I want to see what they say. Um, nobody was predicting that result in the game. How pleased were you about that result? You know, <laughs> proud moment. Some people will say, what? Well, to say that the pick result was on the card would be an exaggeration. How pleased are you with the outcome? It was a superb win. It was a great start to the game. He had a good solid debut. They were simply flawless today. I mean, a goal on your debut is always good as well. So the next leg will be in a week's time, so I'll meet you back then. Alright guys, so we are back for the second leg. Um, oh, didn't mean to click forward. I meant to record a pre-match screen. So 4,921 tickets being sold. That's about four times as many as we got in the previous leg. So in the bumper crowds, and this game's really just going to be a uh, just a mandatory match we have to go through. You know, I don't think they'll cause any trouble, really. I mean, they may score a few, but I doubt they'll score five and win the game on aggregate. So I, d I just suspect quite an easy match. Also, we were able to select numbers, so Bell's picked up his number 11 shirt. We have our strikers wearing 13 and 14. And apart from that, I didn't really change any of the numbers. I just gave Bell 11, really. <laughs> But let's go. Um, I'll say this calmly. Uh, good luck, lads. So let's go. And hopefully, you know, this will be a bland match. It'll be a quick match, you know, in terms of the time it takes to record. We can get this one out of the way with, and we can then go and record the draw. And we get a penalty. And who's going to take this? I think Alexandra's our new penalty taker. He is. Alessandra. 6-1 on aggregate. 1-0 on the day. Straight away. His first ever goal for the club as well. So that must have been quite a nervy time for him to step up. Because... Friendly home fans as well, but in the end it was easy. <laughs> Too easy for him. Five minutes in the second highlight of the game, and this time it's their attack and good save from the keeper. Cornell doing a very good save. And look at that, two shots by both teams, two click opportunities. I doubt you see that much. And I doubt you see the score at 1-0, especially in the Champions League when that stuff happens. But 21, three minutes gone, like I said, I expected it, I wanted it to be a boring game, I expected it to be a boring game, just so we could get this episode, get this game over and done with, I can move on to the more interesting bit, the next round, because we, we're already there, let's see if we can get another goal, Sam and James missing out on the opportunity there, to make it 2-0, and another click opportunity missed by us, actually let's see if we can get this double figures, I'm not going to go attacking, I don't want to go. I don't want to do anything stupid, but I'd love to see if we can make this double figures, for another four goals today, a 5-0 victory. That would be lovely. <laughs> that would be, be the first time we got at double figures outside the first qualifying phase. 
They're going to down that left. They do like attacking down that left. Sobol wasn't in the team last game. Passing it through the referee's legs, you know, because they, they've got that kind of link up with the ref. And, oh, wow, the guy that scored in the first leg has scored here today and made it 1-1, 6-2 on aggregate. That was a pretty nicely worked goal, like I say, through the ref's legs. Passing it between two defenders in the end, dragging players out of positions. And for for Don, for Drenko ends up smashing that one home. We're going to make a, a sub at half-time, though. We're going to take Alan Fraser off. We're going to assist and do the team talk. We're going to take Fraser off because he's tired. And picked up a knock. And we're going to take Gunter off actually as well. Because he's on a yellow. And that'll be our subs for today's game. We'll probably wait till the 80th minute to make another one. Because we just keep him there. Just to make sure any injuries or sending offs. We can cover and change positions and formation a bit. And actually Alessandro has picked up a knock. Nathan Green's looking complacent. I don't like it when my team looks complacent. Because it probably means we're going to concede again. And maybe even here Sobol. Good block first time round. They've hit the post second time and they've scored. See what I mean? 6-3 in aggregate. I mean, it's three more goals. Still not enough to see them progress. Actually, it is enough to see it go to extra time, but I don't really think that's going to happen. Drake's not having a good time since coming on. Bale is not exactly having a good game. I'm going to take Alessandro off. I don't really want him aggravating his injury any more than he already has. Target man, support when James... There you go, look, he's, I think he just got another little knock there as well, made him get even worse condition. But I think we're going to go through. I think that's going to be it. Let's just see, one, two, this you go, the dying highlight of the game. And we have the ball, so that's going to be it. Big ball up front, Bale nods that one straight into the corner flag. <laughs> and there we go, we're through to the next round of the Champions League. And <laughs> it took us a year to get out of, I mean, last year we didn't get out of the same qualifying phase, this year we're in the playoffs, so... Last year was definitely a fluke year, and I think a couple of poor signings. I know someone pointed out in the comments a few episodes back. Uh, well, well, actually, the episode I uploaded with with us getting knocked out, and I made a full few, a few foolish signings. And also the loan thing that I did, where I signed four loan new players, that was a massive mistake on my behalf. And again, a foolish thing to do. And this year, you know, I've built in the right places. I've built in areas that you know definitely could have been improved upon. Now we do look threatening when we go forward. We have two. Very good strikers, a good goalkeeper. Everywhere is a good position. We have Gareth Bloody Bale. <laughs> and we progress through to the next round of the cup. What's well, any assistant there? I don't really mind not doing that. Fraser keeps on picking up knocks, which isn't good because the reason I play him is because of his experience, because of his already proven ability. But it means that we kind of have to keep playing Scott Drake there, the youngster. I don't mind playing Drake there. He's a good player, but I mean, combined total of, what is that, 10 in last season, 5 the season before that, 15 games in all competitions. To be putting him in Champions League games is quite a nervy thing to do because he'll probably make a mistake or probably do something that inexperience will show, basically. But I think the next match will be... Yeah, the next match will definitely be the Port Talbot match. What I'll do is I'll just go up to the draw. We'll see who we get, and I'll meet you back for the playoffs then, which will be the second time in our career. And it will also mean we've got group stage football this season, which is good, which means you guys will get a lot of live comms this season in extended highlights. Hopefully it'll be the first time we get to the Champions League if the draw is kind to us. So let's go. Who could we possibly get? We're the unseeded team. We can get Elsenborg, Basel, FC Copenhagen, Dynamo, or Stal Bucharest. Out of them, I don't know. What? Why not any of them? They're all equally, they're all equally going to be as hard. I know Elsenborg, Elsborg, I mean, sorry. I think they got Europa League. No, they got Champions League football last year. I think group stage. Yeah, they did. They're they're a tricky team. They're gonna be a tricky team as well as FC Copenhagen. Dynamo, I've I've played before, but now because they've got regens coming through, I don't really feel like they're the team I want to be playing. I don't know. Maybe Dynamo, Barzo. Of course, we've played them before. Maybe they're the team we want to play. They look like an aging team. Not exactly decent, you know, values on people apart from Park Song Jin, who is a very good regen. But apart from that, not exactly amazing values. A few good youngsters here and there. I maybe say Basel. That's Stal Bucharest. A few Brazilians now. They're they're a decent team. The fact that they've got Brazilians that often often means that they're a decent team. So let's just go. So Dynamo, that's that's the team we want. Ah, uh, Victor Plasm. 
Copenhagen, Copper, Elsenbart. <laughs> got the. Uh, sorry, I just knocked the mic there, but uh, no, we probably got the difficult team, the most difficult team in the group. Do I play my defensive formation? They've not actually got any players in their squad. I didn't look at that. They don't. Well, uh. See, this is when FN just gives them good players. But I don't know. Maybe this is a blessing in disguise. They may have been the highest. Well, they, they were the lowest in terms of points team. But the fact that they got Champions League football last year, and the fact that, you know, I, I knew they got Champions League football because they were scoring a lot of goals last year in the. Uh, progressing through. 5-1 uh, they won there. I, I took notice of that. They beat Rosenborg 3-1. In the playoffs, I took notice of that. Wait, was that? No, sorry, this year. I can say, look, at 12 1, 9 0. I took notice then of who they were, you know, as a team. 3 2, 1 1. Okay, they didn't win in the Champions League, but still, you take notice of things when they, when people win 21 0, 21 1 on aggregate. You, <laughs> well, you're getting knocked out. You, you realize they're a good team. But maybe that could be a blessing in disguise. So let's continue forward and officially get all the draw information down and stuff like that. And it looks like TNS actually may have progressed through. The, they faced the French team. I don't know if that's a friendly or not. Well, I'll have a look in a second to see how people did in their competitions. Uh, it actually didn't. Oh, it says there. there you go. So we've drawn them. First leg is away from home. Will it actually come up in the fixtures? It does now. So basically, second team against Port Talbot. Second team against Ryle. First teams against Elsborg. Uh, but yeah, let's check out what other teams did in the European competition. So Baller out. But how did they do? They got knocked out of the first round, 11-0 on aggregate to Frank, Frankfurt? Yeah, Frankfurt. Banger City got knocked out in a tough match against Dakia of Moldova. I, they should have probably won that game. That's a, that, that's a bit harsh to take, but how did TNS do? They're the other big team in the league. Sadly, they got knocked out to the French team. FC Schock, whatever. I'm not very good at pronunciation French, but they managed to beat... What team is that? Where are they from? A, mo a former Yugoslavia of Macedonian team, like we did. They managed to beat Dundee of the Scottish League. League okay, they're a championship team, League One, but they must have won, what, the Scottish Cup? I presume? Um, yeah, they won. The, they lost in the Scottish Cup final to Dundee. Dundee of Champions League football, that's why. But still, that's a good win. I mean, actually, they, they won one game, drew one game, but that's still a good result. That's that's going to be That's going to do pretty good for the league, I think. That's going to do well in terms of reputation growing, that's for sure. I think we should go above the Macedonian first division, definitely. Well, this will be it for now, guys. I'm kind of just looking at different things now, looking all over the place. And next time I meet you back will be the Champions League playoff match. So until then, peace out.